So everything in gray is going to be what we're covering in this video. It's mostly just a top facade and some molding, but I decided to overbuild the top just so I didn't have to worry about anything moving down the line, especially since the tap, the top kind of holds those vertical partitions square at the top. I wanted it to be really strong. If I creep to the back side, you'll see um, I mentioned cleats in the video and I don't have a good look at them, but those are the those little square cleats I'm talking about that are screwed to the partitions and then they hold that, that front and so with my center partitions done, I can now glue in the sides, and the sides are basically facades. All the structure of the piece is held in place by those middle partitions. So you'll see I don't really do a lot of fancy joinery to get these attached. The one thing I did do was I noticed that the, f the tenon of the foot was going to overlap that end panel, and I apologize, the camera work here is terrible. Um, some This stuff can be difficult to do with, with one hand. So all I did was I cut a little portion of this bottom panel off to make space for that tenon coming through. You'll see when I post it, I did not have the forethought to do this in the back of the panel as well. So you'll see how I handle that when it comes time to put the feet in. I should have probably put the feet in at this point, but it was easier to work on without them because it was about seven inches taller with the feet in and I didn't want to have to be standing on a ladder a ton to be working on the top of this. So there is that panel in place. I can just eye it up and see that now I would have clearance for the tenon of the foot. Pretty simple stuff. You can see that now that I'll have plenty of clearance for that when I do in fact go to glue those in place. So next, all I'm going to do is put a couple spacers. I end up putting three between the gap to hold that panel in place and square because there's going to be molding and essentially a fake facade at the top. It's really important that that panel is square to the rest of the cabinet. So I just had it in place, squared it up, measured the inside, and then cut some plywood to fit. This will all be covered by a decorative column. So um, the concern of of these showing in the piece is is really non-existent so just tacked everything in place made sure it was all going to fit and then um, i could cut them down to size you can see they're all tacked in place um, these two cabinets are pretty much identical there was a couple measurements i had to tweak but the nice thing about making two pieces like this at a time is it's just easier than than making two separate pieces obviously because you could cut everything um, four times and and I was lucky it was accurate enough that all this stuff was was pretty similar and then I just glued all of my pieces together I put one in the bottom because it sat on those cleats that I had holding up the shelves one in the middle and then one um, at the top like I said pretty simple stuff no fancy joinery they're just butt joints and then um, I could just clamp all this in place and, and let it dry make sure the clearance in the back was right. I wanted everything flush with the front because like I said there will be a column uh, covering all of this and that will be some surface points to glue to. That's pretty much what that looks like. Now that's all square. Everything's flush. You don't want these panels sticking out. Um, if anything having them recessed is going to be better and you can see the back when I accounted for that tenon again as well. So then for the top I'm doing a flat piece of ply across the top and then it's going to have some decorative elements around it. Now there's easier ways I could have done this but I decided to do it the way I did it mostly out of ply because number one ply is going to be dimensionally stable and all of this molding I didn't want it moving I didn't want my gaps coming apart and even though it is a facade it's still a fairly large surface area so I did want to put some structure into the piece. So basically I'm just, I measured all of my parts and when I eventually get plans for this, you'll see, I believe this was about three inches wide with two 45s on the side. And then I just cut a bunch of pieces with 45s. Um, whenever I do stuff like this, because the, if the 45 is not perfect, it won't mate up. Um, I've always cut extra. So I'm just cutting a bunch of, a bunch of 45s on the measurements I have. And then if I make some miscuts, I could just go back and, and recut these. Uh, I won't have to recut the 45s. I'll have extra pieces and I could just recut those. 
So like I said, this is a series of three different sizes. It'll all make sense once you see how I'm setting up this top part with some 45s cut into it. And then this will be the skinnier portion coming off of the base, which will have um, a rabbit on the back side that will mate up with the cabinet. So there's essentially three size pieces for this. Now, like I said, there, there are easier ways to do this, but this is how I decided to do it to make the top as structural as possible. And then there's the rabbit going in the back. Um, you can see I have the feather board and everything set up. This looks like a little bit of a dangerous cut, but it's, it's really not. And this is essentially where I'm going to start. So uh, uh, I think this was about an inch, a little less than two inches, a 45 on one side and a rabbit on the other. Here is my plywood panel across the top. I put a temporary cleat there so I could set everything on the cleat and make my life a little bit easier. This front of this cabinet will have veneer so you won't see any screw holes in there. So I can line up one edge with that rabbit and then I can measure the other side and then I could cut this top facade down to size. Now this top portion is about um, six inches tall, so it's fairly large. You can see how that rabbit's a three quarter inch rabbit to mate with the plywood. The, in the drawing, the, this cabinet sides are flush, so that was important. And then once that's in place, I can go to the other side. I know the offset because I have the rabbit, which is marked on the plywood and I can march where, where that is going. So you can see that piece set in place there. And I marked where exactly that plywood needs to come to, and then I'm cutting that front piece to size. So that is what that's gonna look like. There's that rabbited piece on the edge, and then the plywood's gonna come to those, those two pieces. And this is the beginning of making the bump out for this. Now, like I said, the way I'm doing it is a little more complicated. I chose to do it that way for the reasons I stated. If you don't feel like making all these cuts, you could pretty easily just get a square piece of oak laminated together and, and just have a, a rectangle up top here, a block rectangle, and then the plywood could just end in a butt joint. But this is the way I decided to do it. So then I have that front piece, like I said, that was about three inches wide. I just tape that in place and then I can measure and cut a dado because the, the side piece is going to end in a dado and that will make that top part really strong. So pretty simple. I just calculated the offset of that front piece because it's about three inches. So this is going to be a dado that, that will match that, that piece. I had the measurements all in place, and like I said, all of these are pretty much similar. I think um, between the two cabinets, there were a couple measurements I had to change, but in general, I can make all of these cuts for, for the, same, the same pieces. And then back in place, it makes more sense. You can see what I'm talking about with that dado, which will mate up with the, the other side of this miter. And this is kind of what I was talking about with the bottom. I would have made one continuous piece on the bottom if I was doing it again, and then just have the miters end in, in the flat piece versus having those mortise joints you saw me make. Like I said, not a terrible design, just it would have been a little bit more uh, structural on the bottom to have done it similarly to how I'm doing it here on the top with this, this one piece. And then I just did a couple test cuts to get the right um, size for that last piece I had to cut. You can see how now that's all going to fit into place. And then I could, can trim down this, this piece I had. Like I said, I cut a couple of these slabs so that I could change all of the measurements. Once I had that, I could rip this down. And now I have one big slat, take it to the radial arm saw, cut it into... Uh, five and three quarters because you'll see there's a three quarter bit of detail at the top and then I could attach all of these. So I have a stop set up on the radial arm saw so they all are the exact same size. I use this stop for, for all of the cuts of the 45s. So then to attach all this I'm cutting some square scrap I had. This is three quarter inch poplar by about an inch. And I'm going to flank either side of these partitions with cleats. So you can see I'm gluing them to the side of all the partitions. I'm just going to tack them in place with a, with a, a couple brads. 
and then I'm using these cleats in order to screw into the back side of this front facade. It just makes this so I don't have any visual hardware from the front and it will hold this whole piece pretty, pretty strong. So you can see I'm putting some trim up top so that's why the cleats go all the way to the top. And then here is all my end caps taped together so that they're easy to glue in place. How that looks, that final piece flush with the side you can see the cleats in the back there they're pin nailed to those vertical partitions and then they'll be screwed so with the front off you could see those cleats in place and I could put glue on all of these pieces and then I could attach the front and then glue it uh, screw it from the back side into into this panel through the cleats into the panel and that's how I ended up attaching this they're not it's not the prettiest design but you'll never see these cleats because you won't be able to the back side of the cabinet's obviously going to be covered so unless you stick your head in the in the door opening you'll never see those cleats like i said they're not the prettiest but they were the easiest way to attach that top facade without any visible hardware which i didn't want on this piece so then like i said here's my boxes the the boxes that go in the front I finally bought, uh, went out and bought some blue tape, so this is much easier than using the tape I had in the shop, and I could um, put those in place as well. Have everything clamped, and then you can see I have that top clamped to those cleats as well. I want all of this to be square as well because there's going to be trim going around the, the bottom. When I was screwing into the cleats, that, that corner popped off, so I'll have to reattach that, but this is now screwing from the back side through the cleats into that uh, that oak front and then I could take off the bottom. I'm doing this right away because all the verticals that have glue on them, if they drip onto this portion here, I'll have to chisel it off because it, it will stick. So here's the trim that's going to wrap around the side. I'm showing you one side done as a visual to kind of explain what's happening with the other side. This is just leftover scrap oak. Um, I trimmed it, I think it's about 5 eighths of an inch by about an inch thick. So I just cut a 45, pretty simple stuff, trim, trimming around a piece. I cut the 45s and then I measured to one side, cut the other 45 and then work my way around. Like I said, pretty simple stuff. I have extra of this, so I usually, whenever I'm doing 45s, I usually end up with some missed cuts. So like I said, I, I cut a bunch of these red oak strips for the two sides. And then I could just tape everything and, and work my way around. This piece on the edge is really simple. I cut a 45 on the end. And then all I do is cut a straight cut in the back to make life easier. And then there is that, that oak trim. And then across the front, I'm just going to have a flat piece. I do have a line marked on the side. Like I said, this is about six inches. So from the top, I came down six inches, marked a line, and then lined it up with that trim. See everything taped. And then across the front is just going to be one flat piece. No, no fancy cuts. So that was pretty simple. And there is also going to be trim across the, the top there, but I, I'm not going to show that yet in this video. And then once everything was taped in place, I could go through and, and, and glue everything together. Um, since this is solid wood, there is a little more leeway with miters because if they're not perfect, you could tweak them a little bit easier than veneer than the veneered ply. Veneer ply gets pretty difficult tweaking because you go through the thickness of the, the veneer quite quickly. But with solid oak, um, there's a little more play. These turned out pretty good, but that is something to think about if you're building your own furniture, that there is a little more forgiveness with, with solid wood, especially with miters. Um, filling them and whatnot. I don't love to use filler, which is why I try and get everything perfect for craftsman reasons as well, just because filler is never a perfect match. And then for next, next video is going to be covering um, the drawer boxes and mounting the drawers, so this is kind of a sneak peek to, to that.